Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melder Production, and today I want to show you how you can make a resonant IR. And by resonant, I mean resonant as in it's oscillating or it will resonate at a certain frequency, specifically a musical one. So instead of just random bad sounding resonances, hopefully this will be musical. In case you want to make something that sounds like a sitar or maybe some other thing for ambient music. Previously, I showed how you could do this with the comb filter, and I'm going to be using the comb filter today. However, I'm going to be using it to create an IR that you can use over and over again, and you don't have to set up the comb filter uh, repeatedly. So, let's get started. What I have here is I'm using the M Drummer Synthesizer 4NN right here in MXXX. And so, it would be nice if you could actually do this inside the comb filter, but as you'll see later, there's a reason why I'm not doing it. All I'm doing with this M Drummer synthesizer at first is just creating a quick sine sweep. You see here it's going down from 10K down to uh, 20 Hertz and it's a, with a sine wave and a length of 15 milliseconds. Uh, the envelope I need to change and move this up here so there's no volume envelope and nothing on the bandpass. All this is basically doing is just creating a clicking sound. Let me turn the output down. Another thing I should mention is it's always good when you're messing with comb filters to use a limiter. Here's what it sounds like. Just a click. Next we need a comb filter. So let's go into here and use comb filter. You can use comb or comb MB, whichever you prefer is fine. Now let's set this up. What I want to do is I want to set this to C. You could use any tone, but I'm going to use C just because it's easier for me and I think probably easier for you too. It's just kind of a, a base. So let's move it here. If you look down here, you see the keyboard. This makes it really easy. So I'll do this. It's 65.4 hertz, which I never would have <laughs> figured that out if I would have done it by myself. But luckily, the keyboard does everything for you. So let's click OK. You see this is set. Next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to hit the feedback and turn this up until it starts to resonate. So here, it'll just sound like a quick like ping sound. But as we move it up, So I found around here like uh, 98 or 98.5 is where you get this long decay. It's a bit too long actually. <laughs> it's becoming annoying. I don't want to wait for that. Now there's other things we can do to change this. Like for example the minimum and maximum. I believe these add a low pass filter and a high pass filter inside the feedback loop. But these kind of change the harmonics. I'll let you hear it. You can kind of hear there, it sounds like it's almost going out of tune, and we don't want that. Uh, but it sounds fine as it is. I know it sounds a little bit buzzy, and you think, oh, I might want to turn this down. But I've found that when you're actually using this for an IR, the buzziness actually helps somewhat. Uh, here, we're going to go to Filter 2. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to do a different tone. For this one, let's set the frequency at, uh, let's say, G. So here, 195. I could do that. What's this one? 95. I'll do 195 here. You can do whichever one you want and feels better to you. Before I tried to do these in more like the harmonic series, but I found the higher you get, the less they will actually resonate. It's, it's not as good in my opinion. So we'll do the same thing here, turn the feedback up. Okay, that's sounding pretty good. Now we'll go to filter 3 and we'll do the exact same thing, Let's set the frequency. As I said, uh, having them too high up doesn't sound good, so I found maybe doing it like this. Uh, I don't know if this, well, I'll try it this way. Here we go. Let's try this. Turn the feedback up again. Okay. Let's try turning the output down now and then turning all of them on and see how they sound. Make sure you don't have these in serial, you want them to all be in parallel. Let's hear it. Here it makes a C major chord, which is what I want in this case. If you think later like, oh I like that but I want it to be minor. If you see the shift down here, all you have to do is shift this negative one, so this is one semitone down. 
here for the third one, which is R E. So now it's E flat. You can hear there, that's our E minor. So you can do that if you want. For the most part, this, this is okay, but if I put an equalizer here, you'll hear at the very bottom, there's gonna be like a really uh, annoying bass part here, which might eat into some of the headroom. I'll let you watch it, look around this lower part here. That, I don't want that. What I'm gonna do is just enable this, set this to a high pass filter here and just move this up. As you can see, it's cutting off everything there. And for the most part, this seems good to me. Now you could sculpt this further with the EQ if you want. And in some cases that's good, but for now, I think this is okay for me. The reason I used MXXX as opposed to MCOM uh, in this case is because it has this IR output. This is a somewhat new feature, but you can use this to output anything you have in here as an IR. One thing to make sure of is make sure you turn this off, because if not, you just get a blank IR. So make sure you turn off the drum module. Click IR. Now, wherever you want to put it, I'll put it here on my desktop. So C major, tone, resonant IR, click OK. Are you sure you want to rewrite the file? Yes. I did this beforehand once before to test it. So now I should have an IR there. And you're wondering, okay, well, I have it now. What can I do with it? That you know, sounded pretty bad just having that click go through it. But if you're using it with something else, it can actually sound good. So I have a guitar sound here. This is just the basic sound like this. Nothing special. Now let's turn on M Convolution MB. We have this here, we don't have anything loaded. I'm gonna use the custom path so I can find my IR. Look inside my folders, my desktop, and it's right here, like this. Okay, now I have it 50-50 mix. Let's hear what it sounds like. You should be able to hear it resonating if I hit play something like a C here. You can hear it, it's still going actually. Same thing if I hit E. G. It almost sounds like there's a piano or something playing in the background. So as I'm playing, those uh, tones will continue to ring. This is a really beautiful sound to me. You can also use this M convolution MB. You see here it has this B, and I can add something here too. Let me just add like the artificial reverb here. I can set it in a ratio doing one or the other. So this is the first one we had, which is our resonant IR. Here's the other side, just a reverb. No resonance, but if we put it in serial, it means it'll go from A, the resonant one, into B, like this. With that, you can create all sorts of interesting and uh, fun sounds, I believe. But let's just leave it here for now with uh, just the uh, sorry, resonant IR. I'm forgetting what I'm calling this. From here, we can adjust this in a few different ways. One thing I can add some modulation here. Let me add a bit too much so you can hear it, hopefully, like this. Hopefully you can hear that. It's sometimes a bit subtle but you can add that in there. Also from here, you can use the equalizer to change anything you want. Another thing you can do is here, I don't believe it's in stereo. As you see here, there's 
very little stereo, but we can ch delay the left or right side here like this, say five milliseconds or so, and we get a much larger stereo uh, width. And that's really nice for me. You're probably saying like, oh, that's cool, but I don't want to make a different IR each time I want to do something in a different key. So for that, you can try pitch shifting it. And I would say try this going up and down. So from here, let's say if I wanted to change it to A from C. So how many semitones up is that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can go up nine semitones and that should be our A here. That sounds nice, but it seems like it's weaker than when I was on C. So sometimes it's better to actually move it down. So instead of nine up, we can go negative one, negative two, negative three down like this. Here. So to me, that sounds better. So in that case, I would move it down, but experiment with that yourself. Uh, one thing to notice is if you play this in a different key, it actually won't resonate that well. So in that case, I was playing in uh, A major, but let's say I decided to keep this AR as IR in A, but then I decided to play in G sharp like this. See how it sounds weird and it's not good? If I do the exact same thing and I move this down, so now the actual IR is in G sharp. It sounds good. If you want a minor IR, just like I showed you before when you're creating it, use that shift to move the E to E flat and you can make an I minor IR. So that way you can have one for each. You can have one for major or one for minor. And there's even interesting things you could do with this if I was going to make a song using mode. So if you haven't checked out my modal harmony series, check that out. But let's say I wanted to do something in like E Lydian. So I want an E bass note here, but then I want an F sharp major chord over it. So like, oh, that'd be like an E Lydian sound. So let's see, move this up one, two, three, four, five, six, or I can move it down six. It'd be the same down six. So this should be our F sharp. So now I'll just use this uh, IR and I'll play with a E drone and play an E Lydian. I can practice my modes, I can create a cool song with that, all sorts of things. And using this, you can also add whatever you want, or I could add, put some chorus in the background, etc. And I'm using this in M Convolution MB, but if I put it in MXX, there's even more interesting and cool things I could do with this. I could put like, you know, uh, the, the, some granular effects or whatever I wanted to in that. So hopefully this gave you some ideas of things you can do yourself. You can experiment with more nodes inside the comb filter. You can experiment with, with things that aren't major chords or minor chords, do whatever you want. So I think this is a really cool thing and there's a lots of uh, possibilities out there. And of course, because you made it yourself and you're making your own IRs, you can give them away or sell them or something. I probably shouldn't say that because now I came up with this idea. People probably sell them and won't give me any credit, but that's okay, I guess. <laughs> Unless you become really rich and then I'll probably get mad. Uh, 
anyways, I'm, I'm going off on a rant here. So that means it's probably time to end the video. So if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below and check out all the other products at melterproduction.com. Till next time, see you.